Hi, everybody. <laughs> Adam Savage here in my cave. And today uh, I am going to be upgrading my 3D printer farm. Uh, yeah, it's back there in the back part of the shop uh, down that hall there. And uh, it's got a lot of things that are great about it and a lot of stuff I want to fix. So we're going to head over there and do a lot of little mods on the three, 3D printers I have set up to make using them more efficient. So uh, this, 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 <laughs> this is my printer. Oh my goodness, the light here is terrible. So I have a bunch of things about using this that have not been amazing. So there's a few things about this that have been phenomenal and there's some room for improvement. Phenomenal is this dry box with my little like uh, uh, cheap Amazon uh, uh, dehumidifier. This box is regularly at 30% humidity. That's perfect for storing all of my filaments. Um, I invested in some three kilogram rolls of filament and rather than run them on the back on the outside of the bamboos or through the hot box of this, um, I want to take a couple of them and wind them down onto individual spools. So what's printing in here right now is the last five minutes of a filament winder. That's the first thing I'm going to build today is I'm going to pull this out. Um, uh, we'll include a link to the, uh, the creator of this. It is a. It looks like it's a stunning design. It's all been... Uh, pre-sliced to print on a single plate here on the carbon, and it is. It's doing great. Um, it's literally in the last, like, four minutes of its print. Uh, so we're going to build that. Uh, secondly, you know, when I finish a print, you know, you pull out the, the plate, the PI plate, and you snap the print off, and then you want to grab, you know, a scraper, and you want to scrape the plate. And ideally, when you're scraping a plate, it's down on a flat surface. There is no flat surface here. So I need a flat surface, whether it folds up and allows me to use it temporarily and then folds back down or it's permanent, I am not sure. Underneath the, the, the Cobra Max, I have this little hot box down under there. Um, it is not doing enough to keep the uh, filament in that box uh, below 50% humidity. I think it's like 49. That's not enough for me. So I'm gonna take that hot box. This is just the broad overview, the overture. I'm gonna take that hot box, I'm gonna attach it to the side of this box and I'm gonna feed it into the Cobra Max. One of the beautiful things about the bamboo carbons is that they can uh, print multi-material. You can print multiple colors. You can, yeah, it's all sorts of cool stuff that I haven't investigated. I've mostly been using its multi-material single, multi single head printing ability to use the support, that's this roll of white stuff in the middle in the second position in both AMSs. That's uh, more breakaway supports when you're printing supports for something so it prints and doesn't fall apart. Uh, the interface between the supports and the print is this white stuff which is weaker and breaks apart easier. It's really great. The downsides are is that, did that just finish? It just did. The downsides are that uh, with even a print like only three or four inches high, you could have six or 700 filament changes, which adds like hours and hours and hours to the print. That doesn't really matter because it can be amazing. However, every time it switches between filaments, it has to purge and you end up with these little nernies. You'll see when I get back there. You end up with these little nernies here and they fall out the back of the printer. And people make all sorts of drawings of garbage bins that attach and fit to your Carbon X1. Um, the problem is that this is enough for maybe one like kind of elaborate print and then you've got to empty it. I don't want to empty it, so I'm going to make some chutes on the back of this that go to a single garbage can. I think that's mostly it. I may move these printers around a little bit. I may adjust their positions, but that's not that big a deal. Um, yeah, the filament winder is done. So let's get it to the workbench and wind some filament. That sounds like a really fun way to start. I love that the print finished while I was sitting here. This is so well laid out on the, on the table. Good Lord, hold on, I wanna show you this. Look at that. So this is all one table print. Just touching it meant these started to fall apart because they managed to, this is just incredible. This is, um, this is amazing. Okay. We're gonna get this onto the workbench.
So the problem I had run into is that much of what I'm going to be doing on this filament winder is winding this um, big three kilogram spools. And what I found was the, um, the two spool grabbers that are supposed to be the axle of the spool are just a little bit too short for this three kilogram thing. Now, it's probable that I printed the wrong file. I didn't maybe get quite the right one. That doesn't matter. I modified a dowel so that it fits back in here and into here and allows me, yeah, I'll be able to press fit that and extend it by about that much. And that should give me exactly the, uh, the extra distance I need to connect this from the other side of the three kilogram spool. Uh, so let's get some glue in there. Marvelous. All right, I'll let that set for a minute. That's going to be the good one. And we've got that business. It certainly fits there. Excellent. Okay, so this guy is set. So we do. This business. Ta da! Well, don't you almost not quite fit? Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? Are you really kidding me? Are you really? Are you really? I think I probably downloaded the wrong one, but I don't want to reprint it, so I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do make a mark there, make a mark there, pop this out, pop this out, pop this out. See if I can make this work. There she blows. That's what I wanted. Yeah, that drags like that, and that drags like that. Happy with that. See, that's lovely. So now I want to mount this down. And okay, let's see how it turns. Nice, it turns nicely, I like that. So what I, I've solved the problem, I've got a couple of pieces of sanding belt here. Uh, I'm going on the back side of them. They're just the, just the right amount of flexible. Uh, and I'm bringing this guy in like this. Yep, okay, let's see if that works. I'm gonna cut this here. This feeds through here. Okay. So, here we go. We're, um, test one, transferring the better part of a three kilogram reel Oh, no, that didn't work. I let go.
So I think I'm doing this totally wrong. Oh, no more. Are you kidding me? All right, so I just have to pretend I know what I'm doing here. So, first, let's get rid of the impact driver aspect of this thing. Oh, come on, don't do that to me. Very cool. Super, super cool. We're gonna do some more. All right, uh, we're gonna add in a little bit of grease. Um, this right here is a food safe grease that is uh, 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 specked out by bamboo for greasing their lead screws. I'm just gonna paint a little bit on some of these gears here. There you go, no you don't. Twenty-one. That's going to go there, and both of these will feed in a big funnel down to here. Right, but I have this issue. I have that thing in the way. Hmm. Let's see what we can do. Happy, 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 joy, joy. Um, so I want 12 inches by 12 by 21.
now what it's about. Okay, that's a funnel. That is a funnel. Is it fun? We will see. All right, I've got my spacer. Uh, here's what we did. We added a spacer on the back here with a flange so I could attach it. And I could get it going. And, oh yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, that definitely doesn't work there. That's got to go down. Good. And then garbage can down there. All right, I'm going to do a little tape. Sounds like it's laughing, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. Now that should do what it's supposed to do. See, the uh, the purged filament comes out of here, goes down into here, goes down into that garbage can. All I have to do, empty that garbage can. Great. All right. So hopefully we will get to see the purged filament come out of this chute here and work. Hey, look at that. <laughs> that totally worked. Fabulous. The dry box here is working fantastically. Um, I've got a dry box here for the any cubic, and <laughs> it's always about that threshold to entry. I thought putting this back here, I'd need to switch it out once a week, and that would be not a problem. It is a problem. I don't, I don't like getting down on my knees. Getting back up gets harder every year. Uh, so. I'm going, I've got a shelf here for this, and it's going to go there. And the dry box is going to live here. Mm -hmm. um, I may have to cut away a little bit of this guy, which is fine. I can certainly afford it. Um, the dry box is going to live here, and <clears throat> the dry box will actually have two air throughputs between itself and and this dry box. So I'm gonna get circulation between them instead of just throwing desiccant in there. Um, I'm also going to screw that down to this shelf so that I have um, a positive, I'm fixing all the problems at once. And then I need to route that, uh, the filament. I actually have new filament um, attachments and I'm gonna route them correctly through, through this whole thing and then, I'll just send another print. Yeah, I'll send another print and we'll get going. Okay, uh, the various pieces are coming together here. I've got two holes now in the side of my dry, dry docks, dry, dry box, uh, and they match, hold on, let me switch angles. Here's those holes from the inside and they match up with two holes in this dry box. So my goal is to put a pipe in that top hole and in the bottom hole, I'm gonna put this little 12 volt fan and it's gonna blow air from in here, into here, and it's gonna evacuate out through the top. Yep, that's the goal. So we're gonna mount that thing here, and we're gonna have air circulation going through it. it should work in theory. I mean, we should be able to see this, uh, this hygrometer actually go down to that value or close to it. That'll be our proof that it works. If I can get a uh, good power off of this light, that's what I'll power this with. So 
So to feed the uh, to feed the filament out of the dry box here up through here, I need a uh, a little quick connect thing for my uh, HDPE my line that goes to this. You'll see when I route it, but I have to drill a hole and actually tap it. So we're gonna drill a hole here. An acrylic bit. There she goes. All right. That's great. That'll allow me to run the, the line over there, which I'm going to, but that's later. So many little steps. Okay, so it's time, it's time, it's time for me to route the, uh, the, the filament housing from the side of this dry box up to the inside of this container. So, oh, you can use a little more. There we go. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Okay, so. All right. We are going to let it wind its filament in. Uh, the filament has been routed from the outside of the dry box through its cable here up to the any cubic. Um, so I can close that and I can go, I gotta go get my CF card for sending a print to that because I left it on my desk at home. Um, come on, it's pulling. There it is, here it is, it's pulling. it's not pulling. Uh, slowly, we'll see it come out of the thing. Um, right, I gotta wire up my, um, my dealy bob. Okay, right side is negative. That's what I thought. Okay, so now, I believe, I still have to secure this thing. So now what should be happening is this little fan is actually pushing air in. That is the exhaust that it's coming back out and hopefully that will lower this from 49% to 36%. Let's give it a shot. In the meantime, I'm gonna send a print here. I've got some bamboo refills here, which I'm gonna... I love this PLA matte gray. I really, really dig it. I'm gonna use it all the time. Um, we're gonna do one more simply because I use it all the time. Uh, this is a textured plate. It's a freaking game changer on the Bamboo Carbon X1. And Bamboo Carbon X1 people, my good friends over there, I, I don't know anyone over there, but, you know, we, the good people of Bamboo Carb, Bamboo, you guys should include this in the Carbon X1. It's a game changer of a plate. It's so much better than the smooth plate. Yeah, I know. There are plenty of reasons to use a smooth plate. That's fine. This is my jam right here. Uh, so what happens is, is... I go to the printer and I'm cycling prints, right? I, I feel, I guess, like a lot of people with 3D printers, like if they're not running, they're wasting time, right? They should be running all the time. So I try and keep them active. But that leads to this interesting situation where I go over to the printers to clear one and I pull out the texture plate. And then I'm gonna walk all the way into here, all the way across my shop to scrape the thing off the plate and go put this back. So I'm about to make a table that is this big and about this high that sits over there so I can use it to clear the plates over there. It's a PEI plate table.
And I think it's necessary for a board. And I'm going to make it portable. I was thinking about making it like a swing out table, but I don't need to get fancy. Who needs to get fancy? You don't usually need. To, uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, I'm just going to make a very, very simple table here for this. That's what's happening now. Um, I guess you could watch me make a couple slices on the table saw. So. Come on. Top and the bottom. Oh, right, I do have these over here. Neato. I have some feet that I pulled off something recently and I'm gonna use them on this. But that question is how to attach the legs? It's always the question, how to attach the legs? Hey, I think a print is done. I've got a, a T-Rex skull going on in here, but in here, I've got a Benchy, which I just ran for this. So here I've got the Benchy, and I wanna clear this table. Now, I can just pop the Benchy right off that. That's not a problem. The problem is, is that uh, the printer runs these calibration strips each time, and it helps, I realized, it would help if I had a table with which to clear that stuff. And there we go. Now I can put this over here. I think the very last thing I need is a, uh, a little waste basket in here for putting the extra crap. I don't have that right now, but I'm gonna take some measurements and uh, I may purchase one. I'm very happy with how all the 3D printing stuff worked out today. The uh, big container, the new hot box with circulation, uh, this, the, 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 oh, you know what? Sorry, let's take a second. I wanna talk about this spindle spool winder as like, I wanna talk about this spindle spool winder as like the very best of the internet. This was designed by someone who had built one and it was finicky and they wanted to make a foolproof one so all you need to make this run are 14 skateboard bearings. Most makers have a few of those lying around. Uh, 14 skateboard bearings, everything is press fit. It all prints on a single PEI plate and it is so well set up, I didn't have any trouble at all. I mean, it took a while, it was like a 20 hour print, but this is beautiful. This allowed me to do so much consolidation um, I'm super, super happy with this. We have, I have really been able to increase my efficiency in this new layout. I have less cleaning to do back behind the thing. I've got a hot box who's, yeah, we're now at 39%. We're getting closer. Oh, that was one of the filaments dropping into the back. That's what that was. Everything's working great. Uh, so I'm just gonna put this back here. Starting to think about some colored filaments. Hey, uh, here's a question for you. Uh, if I wanted to make some like anodized aluminum parts, who's got the best red and blue metallic PLA or uh, uh, printable plastic? I want the metal, I want anodized aluminum. I know, I know it's a tall ask, but like I'm thinking the connectors for a spacesuit in red and blue, shiny, but I'd love your opinions on the best finish, the shiny finish anodized aluminum equal of PLA. Yeah, give it to me in the comments. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this. See you guys later. Thank you so much for supporting us by watching this channel. You can support us on an even deeper level by heading over to tested-store.com and picking up one of our tested embroidered baseball caps. We got your normal baseball cap, we got your flex fits, and we got flex fit truckers. And we are just starting to play around with lots of new designs, so check back regularly. Thanks.